Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manuals for the T's. If you do not own this book already, or just one immediately, you're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 63. Please turn to it. Page number 63 and today's our lesson number 13. These problems as you can see there deal with percentages. Now listen carefully before I before we get, uh, dive into these problems here. Uh, if you need more help, uh, many many times I come across people who are not very good at percentages when they have to do it manually without the calculator. If you are one of those people then what, what you find in the book here, there are just a few questions. There are three questions on this page, three or four questions on the next page. That's not enough practice. If you want to become conversant at it, if you want to get good at it, if you want to build your skill where you can do the percentage problem in the exam without the calculator, without getting nervous, you need more practice. On the blackboard is a list of videos that you can find on my channel. Actually, you don't even have to go to my channel. Just go to YouTube. You are at the YouTube, obviously. Just type in this tab. Just type in Revise GRE Math. Okay, I, I'm, I'm fully cognizant of the fact that we're not here for the GRE, we are here for the T's. But just type in revised GRE math, in day 84, and you will find a, pro, a video dealing with percentages. Watch the video in its entirety, that's the very first video, that's the most important word, important one, and then there are nine more. Day 84, day 85, all the way up to day 93, there are 10 of those videos here. And then you also have, you, you can also watch day number 302, 303, 304 and 305. There are four more videos there and then finally day number 293. Altogether there are 15 videos. If you go through all of those videos and practice all the problems with me, you will become very comfortable with percentage problems. You understand? You will build your confidence. Let's do the problem. Practice is the key, you understand? The very first problem that is given to us is 2.13 they're asking us 15% of 500 is what? 15% of 500 is what? Well, we know we know that 10% of 500 is how much is 10% of 500? Well, 10% of anything is just a tenth of it. 10% of anything is just a tenth of it. What is 10 to 500? Well, 10 to 500 is 50, which represents 10%. So if 50 is 10%, that implies that implies that 5% of 500 must be 25. 5% of 500 must be 25. And therefore, 10% plus 5%, that is 15%, 15% of 500 must equal 75. Must equal 75. So this is this is one way of doing the problem. This is more of a non-traditional way. And now we're going to do the same problem in a little bit of an academic way, just to build our skill here, so that we can do a little bit more complicated problem if we if we are, if we if we encounter one. And this is how we go about doing it. Should we just do it here? The key here is to be able to translate this sentence into proper mathematical equation quickly, efficiently, and of course correctly. And the key to that part is to translate one word at a time. We'll translate one word at a time. 15. 15 is just 15. What does percent mean? Percent means, right here, percent, percent literally means per 100. Percent means per 100. Or out of 100. Percent means over 100. 7% 7 means 7 over 100. 20% means 20 over 100. 50% means 50 over 100. 87% means 87 over 100. So, percent means over 100. So, 15, now the percent, percent means over 100. Then we have the word off. What does the word off mean? Off means times or multiply. Off means times or multiply. For example, if you were to ask, if you were to ask half of 10, how much is half of 10? Well, let's find out, shall we? Half off means times, half times 10. Well, half times 10, if you divide top and bottom by 2, and we get 5, of course, half of 10 is 5. But that's what off means. Off means times. 
of means times. So here's here's our third word here, of, which means times. Then we have 500, and then we have equal sign, and equal sign just means equal. Uh, then we have is, is means equal. Perhaps we should do it. Perhaps we should do it right there so that we can translate when we can line up everything so we can see. This part is done, I'm going to raise it. So 15 percent means over 100. Over 100. Off means, off means times 500. Is means equals and what is our unknown quantity? What is our unknown quantity? And tradition dictates that we represent the unknown quantity with letter X. But if you were to use letter Y or Z, nothing is going to happen to us. So that's our equation. That's it. That's the most important part. I'm going to raise this. I'm going to rewrite so that you can see it clearly. 15 over 100 times 500 equals X. That's our equation. Now we just have to solve for it. We just have to solve for the X. Divide top and bottom by 100, you can knock out this 0 with that 0, this 0 with that 0, and we can clearly see that x equals 5 times 15, 5 times 15, which is 75, which we already knew the answer, of course, it is 75. What else could it possibly be? We want to find out 15% of 500, well, we know 10% is 50. If 10% of 500 is 50, it stands to reason that 5% must be 25. Therefore, 10% plus 5% would simply be 50 plus 25, or a grand total of 75, as we saw earlier. Let's do number two, shall we? Number two, we're done with this one. Two point fourteen, I believe. Two point fourteen. Twenty five per cent of what is eight. Again, this problem we can do it uh, non traditionally or we can do it in a, in a very traditional way by setting up the equation. Let's do it both ways just for learning purposes, shall we? Twenty five per cent, as we know, twenty five per cent of anything, doesn't matter what number it is, twenty five per cent of any number is just, is just one quarter. 25% of anything is one quarter of the thing. 25% of, 25% means a quarter of something. So what they're asking here is, what the question is asking is, 25% means one quarter. That's what 25% means. So they're asking us one quarter of, of what number is eight? One quarter of what number is eight? What they're asking, that's what they're asking. One quarter of what number is eight? The answer, of course, is 32. One quarter of 32 a quarter of 32, if you were to divide 32 by 4, we'll get 8. The answer is 32. One quarter of what number is 32? The answer is that number is 32. So that's the non-traditional way of doing it. Now we're going to do the same problem by setting up the equation just so we can learn how to actually set up the equation if we do encounter a more complicated problem, which, we, which you will in the exam. Let's do it again. So I'm going to raise all of this now. That's it. I always like to make sure that I give unobstructed view of the blackboard for at least five seconds. I don't know why. It's just what I do. So here, oh, I sh shouldn't have raised the damn thing. Twenty-five percent of what is eight? Let's do it, shall we? Twenty-five is just twenty-five percent means over one hundred. Off means times what is our unknown what is our unknown which we represent with letter x don't confuse my letter x with the multiplication sign that's the multiplication sign that's the letter x so that's our what is means equal 8 there is your equation there is our equation i'm going to rewrite it so that it doesn't look so spread out and so forth so what we have here is actually we can leave it here how do we get rid of this 100 from here well let's multiply both sides by 100, shall we? 25% of, oh, this is ridiculous. One quarter of what is, well, since we started it, 
Let's multiply both sides by 100 so we can get rid of the 100 here. So that takes care of this 100, and what we end up with is 25 times x. 25 times x equals 8 times 100. Now divide both sides by 25. If you divide both sides by 25, we can get rid of this 25. We are left by x by itself, which is exactly what we wanted. And here we have 100 on the top, we have 25 on the bottom. Let's divide top and bottom by 25. And if we do that, this 25 is going to disappear. It becomes 1, and the 100 will become 4, which of course we knew the answer. The answer is 8 times 4 or 32. x equals 32. In other words, what we're claiming here is that we're replacing the what part by 32. What we're claiming is that 25% of 32 is 8. 25%, a quarter of 32 is 8, is what we're claiming, which of course is true. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number, number 215. Number 215 is the next one. The next one says, what percent of 250 what percent of 250 is 10? Now this is where this is where it comes in handy when the when the problem becomes a little bit more tricky. I'm going to rewrite it. I don't know why, but I'm going to rewrite it. What percent of 250 is 10? I wanted to rewrite it because we want to line up every word. The key here, as I said already many times, is to translate one word at a time. One word at a time, and you will never go wrong. If you translate one word at a time, then the correct equation will automatically emerge all by itself. It will emerge all by itself without you having to think about it, without you having to worry about how to write the equation. Let's do it, shall we? What is the unknown, which we represent with letter x? Percent, the word percent means over 100 out of 100, or 100, so x, x percent means over 100, off means times, as we just saw a little while ago, off means times, then we have 250, right here, then we have our is, whether we have is, are, were, that just means equal, and then 10. There we go, there is our equation. That's it, we are almost done. Let's get going now. Let's divide top and bottom by 10, shall we? This 250 actually is 250 over 1. So let's divide top and bottom by 10. And if we divide top and bottom by 10, we can knock out one zero here, we can knock out this zero. We still have to get rid of this 10 from, from the bottom here. Let's multiply both sides by 10. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by 10. And that will knock out this 10 with that 10. Now we are left with x times 25. X times 25 is 25x equals 100. 10 times 10 is 100. We want the x by itself. So let's divide both sides by 25. Divide both sides by 25. I have to do something. I can't help it. Because if, I, if my algebra teacher were to look at the blackboard right now, all hell is going to break loose. This equal sign has to line up with the fraction thing here. When we divide both, both top and bottom by 25, we can get rid of this 25, and x by itself, as you can see there, equals 100 over 25, which is just 4. X is 4. That's it, we're done. What we're going to do now is to quickly plug back in, plug back the value that we're claiming in the original statement and see if it makes any sense. We're going to verify it. We're going to verify it. We're going to take a few seconds to verify it, whether you like it or not. You understand? As my mother used to say to us, when she put something in front of us that we didn't like, she would say, you're going to enjoy it, whether you like it or not. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to enjoy it, whether you like it or not. So let's put back x equals 4. The x part is this what part. This, is a, this, this unknown quantity was this part right here. And we're going to replace that with 4. And what we're claiming is, I need the room, so I have to erase it. I'll give you a few seconds again to pause the video if you have to. Let's verify, shall we? So what we're saying is that 4, this what is 4, 
So what we're claiming is that 4% of 250, 4% of 250 is 10. That's what we're claiming. Well, we know 1% of, let's start with something simple. We know 10%, 10 of 250 is 25. 10% because it's a tenth of it. If 10% of 25 is 250, uh, if 10% of 250 is 25, that implies that 1% of 250 must be 2.5. Are you with me? 1% of 250 is 2.5, which makes perfect sense. You take your 250 and 1% means over 100. 1% means over 100. If it's over 100, you just take your 250 and move the decimal place to two places. It becomes 2.5, which makes perfect sense. So if 1% of, if, if of 250 is 2.5, then it stands to reason that times 4, which is 4%, must be 2.5, 2.5 times 4. And how much is 2.5 times 4? How the hell do I know? Let's find out, shall we? 2.5 times 4. How do we do that? Well, we know 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 2 is 8 and 4 halves are 2. 4 halves are 2. Or if you don't like it this way, let me do it the other way around. It will be easier. 4 times 2 and a half is simply 4 times 2 which is 8 and 4 halves. How much, is, how much are 4 halves? Well, we know 2 halves make a 1. 4 halves make 2. In other words, 2 and a half times 4 is 10 which is exactly what we claim, which is exactly what it is. 4%, we just found out that 1 times 4%, 1 time, 1 percent times 4, which is 4% of 250 is 10, which is exactly what, the, what we claim. We claim that 4, 4%, we claim that 4% of 250 is 10, which is exactly what 4% of 250 is 10. That's exactly what we're getting. The answer is correct. I will see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.